Hey folks, this is Jeff from the new Janky Workshop and welcome to my shop. If you have any questions on the tools, layout, general jankiness of the shop, anything at all really, leave a comment below and I'll answer it. One thing to note, I have crap everywhere. This is a functional shop. I use it, it's also a garage. Another thing you'll see in this tour is my wife, who's an author and illustrator, also works from home. So you'll see all of her stuff around here as well. And in the basement, we use that too. So there's crap everywhere, so just know that this is not fancy, it's not overdone. I blew the leaves out of the garage today just for this. I also put a couple tools away, but other than that, this is pretty much how I use it. Let's get into it. Since I live in New England, it gets cold. In the summer, it gets hot. One upgrade I would love above all else here is to actually get the shop insulated and have some climate control in here. In the next year or five, we'll eventually be doing that. Let's start with the table saw. It is the saw stop contractor table. You can see I have a janky rolling base on it. This was originally created for my old 10 inch craftsman table saw, which scared the hell out of me. I upgraded to the saw stop. I have a small Raycon dedicated dust collector next to it. Turn this on manually when I need to run this off. I also have one of those little dust collection baggies underneath there. And you'll see on the back, I have the outfeed table. Now let me sneak around here. And to keep in with the jankiness, you can see it's up on some four by four blocks to actually touch the ground. So it's not the best thing in the world and I need to come up with another solution for that or maybe take it off its mobile base because that is why those do, do not touch the ground. So maybe one of these days I'll do that. It's just heavy. I got this a few years ago and by far it is the most expensive tool I own. I bought this brand new. I like to keep my little fleshy meat bits. So I went with Sawstuff's meat sensing technology so I can make sure that I keep all those fleshy meat bits. And also on top of that, the precision of the fence and just the overall quality of this thing is just wonderful and that's just icing on the top. See here, I also have a little table saw caddy that holds all my push sticks and other things like that. This is super handy and made a quick video on this so you can see that in the description below. One thing I would like to do is actually get the inset router table for this. Maybe I'll do that in the next year or so. Maybe a different configuration, I'm not sure yet. But right now, with it facing this way right by the door, I can open the garage door and then have large pieces go through and out into that way. So this is where it exists for right now. This is one of the first things I built when I permanently moved my car outside. So I needed an assembly table. So this was cheap and easy to make and it hasn't failed me yet. It is on casters as you can see, but I never move it. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna take those off or whatever, but I have the option to move it if I want to, but I don't. It does make it a little wobbly, but that's not a problem in this shop. Underneath, I store stuff like my planer, my routers, this box of hinges down here, and other things. And this is why I also don't move it is because I have so much stuff stored underneath there. I don't like to throw stuff away that could be useful someday. I may be a hoarder, but I'm a high functioning hoarder. My hoard is organized. That I have to move all that to move the bench. And I don't like to do that. Over against the wall here is the wall workbench, as I call it, because it's a workbench that's up against the wall. This came with the house. This was already here, but I use this to have my easily accessible tools. You can see I have my screwdrivers, chisels, wrenches, all sorts of stuff that I'm going to need on a daily basis in the shop, wire cutters, all that stuff. Below that, I have my drill bits. I have my most used screws also easily accessible, other bits, bobs, whatever. And over here, I have all my little accessory bins. I have a lot of them. I have a bunch more in the basement. Since I do much more than just woodworking, I have a whole lot of different things and they need to be somewhat organized. So I keep those all over here. Above that, I have more storage. This roof sits on a 45 degree angle to the back of the house. So I had to get a little creative with the shelves that are up here. So I have some shelving inside the support beams of the ceiling. And you can see I have things like shims and pneumatic bits, electrical hooks, hand planes, sanding pads, and other stuff. And I have more stuff that goes over there. There's my clamp storage up there. And you can see up here, I have an ax, I have an ice ax, I have a bunch of saws. 
I was on a video call with Bob from I Like to Make Stuff a while back, and he's like, that's a great idea. I love it. You have all your sharp, heavy things sitting there above your head. I'm janky. I know this. And below that, we have storage for measuring things, drill bits, cutty bits, screwdrivers, files, chisels, wrenches, pliers. It's a little chaotic, but it works for me. Next to that, I have my pneumatic nailers, 23, 18, 16, my T50 stapler, more storage. And below that, I have tools that I don't use all that often, but this is where I store them. And before we go to my next workbench, just like to point out one of the biggest things that have changed this year is we no longer have that shop in central Massachusetts. It just didn't make sense financially. So now it's just me in my home workshops. This workbench here is a Rockler woodworking bench. It's got a face vise, a side vise. It's got storage underneath, which I use for my sanding pads, stuff like that. Put my hammer rack that I made earlier this year onto the side of here to help organize my ever-growing hammer collection. On top of here, I keep my wood lathe, at least for right now when I don't use it. I hide it underneath there, but as you can see, that's kind of full of stuff right now. This is a great workbench. I love the vices on it. Excellent work holding on the top. So I love this workbench and I'm very glad that I have it in my shop. And since we're here, let's go around to the other side. This is my new moiter bench. One of the upgrades I made when moving out of that shop in Hudson was to replace my 10 inch cobalt dual bevel sliding miter saw with a Bosch 12 inch dual bevel sliding miter saw. Now, a lot of people say the dust collection isn't great. I find it's okay. It does throw a lot of sawdust to the back, but that is okay. I'm all right with that. This is on a table that I built from a desk from that shop office that we destroyed to make our wood shop. And then just some big box construction lumber to actually make the leads. It's nothing pretty, but it's highly functional. It's super sturdy and it has open storage underneath. As you can see, I have my shop vac underneath there. And one of the things that I absolutely love that I did with this when I got this new miter saw one of the upgrades I made was I got a switch so that when I run this, makes a terrible noise, but the dust collection comes on automatically and then turns off automatically, which saves me a couple seconds, which really works for my workflow. One thing I can suggest, if you're going to be getting into woodworking, start with a 12 inch miter saw. Don't go with the 10 inch. They are cheap. The big box store brands are okay. They work well, but the precision and cutting capacity of this thing is worth the money. You don't have to get a Bosch. DeWalt makes a perfectly good saw. There's plenty of other saws out there that you can get. I like the dual sliding bevel capacity so I can move this thing around. Obviously I can't move to one side because there is that thing right there, but I love the dual sliding bevel saw myself. But if you want to get just a fixed, that is perfectly fine. Most of the time, you're just cutting 90s on this thing anyways. But I highly suggest spending the money on one of these instead of wasting your money on a 10-inch saw, which you're going to upgrade in the future anyways. And next to that, I have my Jet Tabletop Drill Press. It's a little old, but it does the job. I would love to upgrade to a Nova Voyager electronic one, because right now I have to change belts to change the speed, which... I don't like to do, but this thing works for right now. But again, one of those upgrades I like to make for the future. And underneath there, I store my drill bits and Forstner bits um, that I use quite often with this thing. And next to that, I have my grinders and buffers. These are just when six inch bench grinders. And now we're back to the other side of that table. Over here, I have my welding cart. I keep it tucked underneath the edge of my table saw. So I have another storage area here, but this is a fantastic little cart, which I have my five-in-one welder on. I keep all the clamps and everything that I use for welding on this cart. I can clamp right to the top for the negative. As you can see, that's still on there. And it's just a fantastic little cart for metalworking and really works for what I need. Eventually, I'd love to get a, a legit welding table with dog holes and everything so I can do work holding. But for right now, what I'm doing, this works out quite well. Here next to my back bench, I have my 10-inch Rikon bandsaw. It's a 10305. It's a good little bandsaw. I would love something bigger, like the Laguna 14 inch BX. However, where the space that I have and also the cost of that, this thing works just fine for me. Underneath that, I keep my angle grinders and some angle grinder tools. 
And below that, I also have a small shop vac, which I have hooked up to my rigid spindle sander here and my bandsaw. They both share that. So when I need to do some cutting or something like that, I can actually run that. And this also too has an auto switch on it. You'll see a lot of people have this rigid spindle sander. It's relatively cheap. It's about two, 200 bucks or so. And this thing is just absolutely fantastic for sanding. I highly recommend one of these. Any spindle sander will do. You can swap out the spindles from the flat bit that I have on there now to some smaller spindles to actually get into some tight corners. It's quite fantastic. I highly recommend it. Below that, I have my pancake air compressor and I have my retractable air hose here for this shop. That is a 50 foot air hose. I can get out to the cars. I can fill tires up. I can blow down stuff in the shop. I can get that really anywhere I need it to with this small footprint that I have. Above that is where I have my drill storage. Started with Craftsman when I first got into woodworking. Craftsman, I then burned out a couple drills doing a yard working project, actually the garden that we saw out there. So then I upgraded to DeWalt, which is not top of the line, it's no Milwaukee, but it works great for what I use them for. And I'm very happy with DeWalt. They have a lot of tools, so the batteries are interchangeable. You can also get the cheap knockoff batteries like I have that work pretty decently. So I have my battery storage and charging station above that. And above that, I have more discs for my angle grinders and just other miscellaneous things. So this is all my wood storage. I have smaller bits here, have large bits there and some more smaller bits up there and some hardwoods. I have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that I've picked up and collected over the years for future projects, restoration things, whatever. Um, have more wood storage down here. I have wood storage basically everywhere in this garage and storage for other things everywhere in this garage. I have these little shelves I picked up which have my knife grinder on it. This is a when. I can't afford a Tormach. I'm not going to buy a Tormach anytime soon but this thing works great. And I have some other tool storage underneath there. Some more metal storage, cutoff bin, more consumable storage, low torches and stuff like that over there. And because I have limited space here, I have to keep my blacksmithing stuff tucked away underneath the table saw. So you can see that in here, I have my metalworking vise, which is now red from a recent project that I made. I put this up on a cart this year instead of having to drag it out because it is heavy. I also keep a couple weights in there to keep the, uh, the weight down. And I'm sorry about the light here, but we have a gorgeous winter day right now. So I'm gonna, it just is what it is. But this is my metalworking vise. And then I have my, have my blacksmithing anvil here have just some pipe connectors that I've screwed into the side of the log there, which hold all my tools. And then I have my knife forge. It's a little small guy, but it's perfect for what I need it for. So now that you see the garage workshop and everything that's out here, let's head inside to the basement. This is the unfinished small basement workshop that I have. As you can see, also very cluttered and I like to use all the space that I can in here, above the oil tank, put in shelves above the workbench there, use the pipes to hang stuff, and I have some storage bins and some carts. Over here is the main workbench. I do a lot of assembly stuff from the laser over here. So I just have a small cutting mat in between two pieces of leather. So I have non-marring surfaces that I can use. I keep my Milwaukee 12 volt system available here. I also have some other 12 volt tools over here. These are my indoor system and travel tools. So if I am going somewhere to do some work or if I need to do something in the house, these are the ones that I use. On top here, I have more accessory storage. This is all screws, bits and stuff like that. I like to subscribe to Adam Savage's first order retrievability. So I have duplicates of tools down here that I have up in the garage and vice versa. Just because I don't like to go far to get a tool to do something, I like to do it as soon as I possibly can. So down here, other than that, I have in the first shelf here, I got drill bits, I got leather, 
I've got epoxy, some works in progress, paints, leather stuff, more leather stuff. Over here, I have my glues, leather finishing, dyes, isopropyl alcohol, denatured alcohol, acetone for working and cleaning, laser stuff, epoxy, have my spring clamp storage over here, tape storage. And up here, I have a lifetime supply of bamboo chopsticks. If not, please bury them with me. Files, electrical connectors, little show-off shelf of stuff that I like to keep and display. Book binding, flocking, electronics, business cards. I keep a lot of stuff in here. Below here, I have stuff for screen printing, leather, clamping, rags, epoxy. I have rags and tack tape. I keep a tub of mineral oil. So I can just come down here and drop a cutting board or something into there, let it sit for a while, and then pull it out later. Miscellaneous bits. On the oil tank, I have my bigger screwdrivers. Get another hand if I need it. Have my hammer storage. Again, my Milwaukee M12 storage for cutoff saw, circular saw, saws all. Above that, I have foam, fabric, foam core, leather, a whole bunch of stuff. This workbench is new in the shop this year. This one actually came from the shop in central Massachusetts. I have since, in addition to this, I have this lower so I can sit at this one. This one's a standing work desk. This one's a sitting work desk, or I just usually have it piled on with crap. I also installed some air down here this year. So I love this air compressor. It's a California Tools light and quiet air compressor, and it is super quiet. And I have this plumbed up to a 50 foot air hose in the ceiling, retractable air hose. So I have air on demand down here. And I can also drag this over to the laser to clean it out, drag it over to the large assembly table in the other room to do some brad nailing or whatever else that I need to do. I can get it anywhere in the basement with that. Behind that, I put some studs into the walls and I just use some joist hangers to actually get them up there. And actually, and then I used high bond adhesive to actually put the studs in. And then I have a shelf up there for more storage because I always need more storage. I have a little pan of ice on the end there. And behind the door here, I have my flammable storage. This is a roadside find that I found down the street. And so we use this now to store all my flammable items down here. So you can see it's loaded with stuff. Or is that on top of that I have some chargers for my Ryobi glue gun and my Milwaukee M12s and over here I just have more storage paints yada yada stuff and up here this is an awesome thing that I did this year this is a basement I have no running water down here but I always need water so rather than just having a spray bottle I also have an old laundry detergent bottle up here and this little guy on the floor and now, I have water on demand when I need it in the basement. Kind of a hack, but hey, it works. Let's take a look at the rest of the basement. Over here, this is the office. This is where I do my day job stuff. So you can see I have my multi-monitor setup here. This is where I do all my video editing because I have my big laptop down here, which is not really that movable, but here it is anyways. Um, but this is my actual work desk. It's a standing sitting desk, so I do that. Over here, this is new this year. We put this table in. Again, simple construction, just two by fours and a desktop from the office that we uh, destroyed in Hudson, um, central Massachusetts for that other shop. Put some shelves in up above. This is kind of our shipping station. So when we're shipping stuff out from either my stuff or my wife's business, we use this to actually put together orders and send them out. So you'll see a lot of stuff like that, like packing tape and bubble mailers and stuff up there. Over here, this is also new. We've added this little workbench that we got for 40 bucks on Craigslist. This is where we do product photography, other assembly, stuff like that. So we got our light boxes and stuff there. Some more storage on a little rack there. This is our large assembly table, also known as a pool table. We don't use it as a pool table. Hardly ever. However, if we want to, we can. We can pull this 4x8 piece of plywood off. But right now, we just 
usually keep it like this. There's usually a lot more stuff piled on top of it. This is, we use this for large glue ups, packing orders, assembling orders, stuff like that. We do all that down here in a super large cutting mat, which we use for lots of cutting, as you would assume. These are new this year. These are shelves that were put in for my wife's business so she can have storage for all of her product. And back in the corner here, I have my Glowforge Pro Laser. I have it piped outside. You can see I put in this fancy new Vivor, Vever, whatever, however you pronounce the company. I put in this uh, fancy new exhaust fan this year. So you can control the speed and everything over here. And then in this back room, we have more storage for my wife's business, but also the laser storage, quarter inch, eighth inch, all the materials that we use for laser cutting get stored back here. Thank you so much for watching. Thus concludes our tour for the year. If you have any questions or comments on anything that we've gone over, please leave it in the comments below. Or if you just want to say hi, also leave a comment below. And if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. We do a lot of projects like woodworking, metalworking, leatherworking, laser cutting, and more. So please check out our other videos, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.